Hey guys, Matt Abdi with Pig Beach Barbecue. How did I get into barbecue? I love this question. So I'm a classically trained chef, worked in mostly fine dining Italian restaurants my entire career. I met my current business partner and one of my best friends, Rob Shauger. He was an investor at Del Posto, the restaurant that I was working at. And we sort of took a happenstance trip to Texas to taste barbecue because my chef, Mark Ladner at the time, wanted to see if there was any correlation between American barbecue and barbecue in the region of Abruzzo, Italy. Turns out there really isn't any. Abruzzo, Italy is mostly Spiadini culture, and Texas is obviously brisket and meat beefy king sort of region. And uh, we became very friendly on that trip. When we got back, he invited me out to his home on the weekends and we just started barbecuing as a hobby. That hobby turned into a passion. That passion led us to start competing in local barbecue competitions. Those local competitions, we started winning all of them and somehow Rob got us into Memphis in May and then our first year down there, we won first place in poultry and second place in a whole hog. And that's where the whole catalyst uh, began of the world of Pig Beach Barbecue. Who is my biggest inspiration in barbecue? It's such a hard question to answer because being from New York, I've gotten inspiration from so many of these amazing people that have become our barbecue family here. Whether it's Chris Lilly from Decatur, Alabama, or Tuffy Stone from Richmond, Virginia, or if it's our family at Ubon's in Mississippi, there's so many great inspirational people and all these regions have different styles and approaches to things. So being a New Yorker, we've been able to take that inspiration and sort of put our twist or our best ode to those regions here in New York at Pig Beach Barbecue. So it's almost impossible for me to say, but just having the opportunity to see, work, and hang with some of these amazing legends of barbecue, it's just been a dream come true. Tell you about my childhood when it comes to cooking, well, we might have to have a small novel on this end of the story. I'll do my best to keep it quick. I'm half Italian, I'm half Lebanese. I was born and raised in upstate New York, a very small town called New Hartford. My father's side of the family was Lebanese. My mother's side of the family was Italian. My father came from a bunch of farmers, green beans and peas, English peas mostly. My mother's side of the family that's Italian was from Connecticut. My entire life I grew up with two phrases, sartain and manja, both which basically just mean eat, be healthy, be happy. So I was inundated with food and food for me was just that one thing that brought people together, that put a smile on your face. And what I love the most about it is my grandmother, my town grandma and my Lebanese grandmother would both always say to me, Matt, this is what I can do to show you my love. This is what I can do to nourish you and to help you grow. And this is the greatest blessing in the world is to be able to have you eat the food that we create. So for me, food has always been such a huge part of my life since I was a little kid. My first memory of cooking is probably when I was about five years old making pancakes with my dad. And my dad likes to say he can burn water. My dad is not a cook. But it was one of those things, bonding with your father when you're a little boy, and he like flipped the pancake in the pan, and the first time I was awed by it. And maybe a hundred pancakes later and a couple years later I finally landed one that didn't go on the ceiling or on the floor or on the stove and make a mess and I just thought it was the coolest thing ever. So I just, I've loved food and whether it's a bowl of chicken soup when you're sick or a piece of chocolate when you're sad, food just has that unique ability to make you feel a little bit better, put a smile on your face and more so than anything, food brings people together and there's no cuisine quite like barbecue where you're cooking for a big gathering of people to bring those family, those friends, those loved ones together in one spot and enjoy a meal. What is the best barbecue advice I can give? Wow, um, I, th I think the first thing is don't be afraid to try. Lots of times people get very nervous about cooking barbecue because it does take a long time to cook. And sometimes they want to rush, sometimes they want to peek, sometimes they just, they're uncertain. So don't be afraid to try, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Start off using lesser expensive cuts of meat if, if monetarily your budgets are concerned, which it is for most. Um, pork shoulders are a great piece of barbecue to work on, to start on because they're less expensive and they feed a lot of people. But outside of that, I think one of the most important pieces of advice is if you're really serious about cooking barbecue, whether that is, is for a hobby or for a professional barbecue restaurant, Go get yourself a really good digital instrument thermometer. Once you read enough cookbooks and you understand those temperatures of levels of doneness or stalls or whatever's happening within those products or those pieces of protein, it will give you a much better understanding of when things are perfectly cooked versus the guessing of the touching or just kind of thinking, oh, it's been this many hours, it's been that many hours, it's an hour a pound. A digital instrument thermometer is your best way to know when your barbecue is perfectly cooked. What stands out to me in this industry the most is truly the barbecue family that we talk a lot about coming from that fine dining atmosphere where many things for me in my entire career were very cutthroat. When I started meeting these barbecue legends and how sweet and kind and hospitable and welcoming and warming and how they're just there for you and I'm not getting goosebumps and getting choked up kind of talking about this, but I don't think 
In my life, I've never had a support network of people that I can call my friends and my family more so than in this barbecue world. And the case and important example is this benefit that we're putting on at Pig Beach Queens in honor of my brother-in-law that passed away where when Jeff Mitchner died, this amazing support network of this barbecue family reached out to me and said, how can we help? And not only did they do that, but they showed up, they came, they represented, and they brought their love, their support, to make us all come together to get through that tragedy. And not only do that, help us create this foundation that has been this thing that's been going on to honor Jeff and keep his legacy alive with us. My relationship with Royal Oak is, is absolutely incredible. It's that charcoal that I turn to when I'm cooking for my friends and family in my backyard or going and competing on a national competition level. It's consistent, it's great. The people that are involved in this family business is absolutely amazing. It's made in the USA and it's the charcoal that I always turn to when I need to cook, whether it's for my friends, family, and loved ones or on the big national stage of Memphis in May cooking for a national barbecue competition. My favorite Royal Oak product, I mean, it's kind of hard to pick and choose between all of those because all of them are so great for the specific needs and roles that we do. Uh, I love the lump charcoal when I'm grilling because it burns nice and hot. I can get that good char on the, on the steaks or the burgers or whatever it is that I'm cooking outside. Um, the tumbleweeds are amazing because for the longest time, lighting charcoal can be a very, it can be a hassle. And I've gone to barbecue competitions, I've gone to neighbors cooking barbecue in the backyard, and they'll try to light charcoal with like a blowtorch or like some wound up paper and just fan it. The tumbleweeds are an amazing thing that gets that charcoal lit so simple, so effortlessly and easy that it's a must have when you're firing up that chimney to get that charcoal lit. And when we're getting ready to cook for our long cooks, particularly when it's whole hog, the lump charcoal for, um, when we're getting ready to cook for our whole hogs, the briquettes for me are the best because they burn super consistent, they're even, and I can count on them to do the job I need them to do while I'm cooking a, a piggy for about 24 hours or so. My, what is my biggest takeaway from barbecue? My biggest takeaway from barbecue is the people. I think within this community, within this culture, within this cuisine, the food is incredible. It brings people together like no other. And let's be honest, if you're having a celebration, particularly for anything in life, Barbecue is that perfect cuisine to bring people together. It feeds a lot, you hang out while it's cooking, you're having drinks, you're telling stories. It's just that amazing thing that comes with so much great culture and flavor and food and the people that when it brings them together and you're able to have a, have a beverage while you're waiting for something to finish cooking. It's just for me, it's, it's what we live for. Bringing people together, sharing stories, sharing that love, and then being able to celebrate it with this incredible feast that you've been spending hours cooking. There's nothing better. What does my day-to-day -day look like? Oh my God, this is a great question. So I am a father to two, um, a 10-month-old baby and a five-and-a-half-year-old, a 10-month-old daughter and a five-and-a-half-year-old son, the love of my life, my wife, Megan. I typically wake up around 6 a.m. with my daughter, Ava. That's God willing if she slept through the night. Um, thank God I can function off a little sleep on a regular basis. I'll get up at 6 a.m. with her. I'll give her her morning bottle. After she's fed, my son wakes up around 6.45, 7 o'clock. I get him dressed and ready for school, brush his teeth, comb his hair, get him dressed. Then I bring my son to school around 7.45 to get him to school by 8. I immediately drive to the restaurant to go and just get my sort of situation settled. I typically do the bulk of my emailing in the morning, any sort of ordering that I might do or planning for an event that I might be doing. And then I just jump into the pits with my team and we just start cooking great barbecue and getting ready for service for lunch and dinner. But on a personal level, the biggest challenge I probably had in life is when I lost my brother-in-law, Jeff, and how it affected my family. Um, Jeff's twin sister is my wife, Megan, and losing that's, I never had any tragedy or loss like that in my life. And when that happened, that kind of upside down my world. And, um, you know, you just live every day trying to do your best to honor those people you love and keep their memories alive and make it so that his little girl, his daughter Hayes, can remember him as being the incredible human that he was. What has been my biggest success? I, I have to honestly say my, bi my biggest success is my family. I am that family guy. I'm that quintessential, like, loving father, loving husband. Uh, dreamt my whole life of being able to find the one after many, uh, many duds, I suppose, out in the world. But my family is everything to me. Having my family is my greatest achievement. It's my greatest success story. Raising my children to be these loving, happy, healthy people means the world to me. Being able to have this restaurant, Pig Beach, and have these relationships with so many incredible people out there to continue to grow and expand and network and make these amazing friends is, is my, another great achievement in my life. What are the most important things you should focus on in a backyard cook and barbecue? I would have to say it's temperature management. Lots of things when you're first starting out in your backyard barbecue, cooking on whatever sort of cooker, grill, smoker you have, 
Um, it requires a lot of attention. If those temperatures spike or if they dip, you're either burning your barbecue or it's not cooking at all and things get kind of funny. So making sure that you have proper temperature management and understanding how those burns uh, correlate is very important to having that beautifully cooked, consistent barbecue. Outside of that, that's when you can have some fun. Once you've mastered that level of keeping your heat consistent, which is great using this product right here because it does the best job at doing that, you can then have a lot of fun with seasonings and flavor profiles. Work on your rubs, work on your sauces. Have some fun with that. Be inventive or follow somebody that you might be inspired by or love and try to do what they do. And then from there, once you feel you've mastered that, you can then start adapting it to be your own and then have a lot of fun with it and say, that's my barbecue. What does my family request for me the most is probably just to be for me to be around a little bit more. I do have a very active day and I cut out as much pot time possible being with my son to drop him off from school. I sneak out of work after lunch to pick him up from school just to have a little bit of time with him, go get an ice cream, go get a little snack before I bring him back uh, home to school. And then I go back to the restaurant and work dinner service. So I think my family request the most for me is just for me to be around a little bit more. And that's just because I, they're everything to me and I'm everything to them. Uh, but if it's food wise, my son is a very big fan of French fries with cheese sauce. I currently have two active locations. Which one is my favorite and why? It's like trying to pick between your, your favorite children. I think it's impossible. So I moved down to Florida about a year and a half ago after 15 and a half years time spent in New York City. And we started this project, Pig Beach, back in 2015. And we made this amazing thing that you never know what would happen when we started it. We opened up Pig Beach Queens in the midst of the pandemic, so much so that the project stalled out for about a year because of it. And then when we finally got it open, it was like reaching a mountaintop, going through all the adversity that we went through with the city and COVID and all the limitations and the restrictions. So there will always be a very special place in my heart for getting Queens opened up. Florida, we also faced limitations and restrictions and adversity getting that spot open for the same reason uh, of COVID slowing all of that down. But Florida has been a welcome opportunity for me and my family to be able to have more time with my family. That quality of life for me has gotten a little bit better because my commute is much less. It only takes me about 15 minutes to get to work versus an hour and a half to two hours of traffic here in New York City. So being able to have that extra few hours a day with my family means the world to me. But both restaurants are unique and both restaurants are truly special and it's impossible for me to choose which one is, is my favorite. How did it feel winning first and second place titles in my first time competing in Memphis in May in 2014? Um, oh my, oh my God, uh, surreal to say the least. I uh, never expected to get up onto that stage. I never expected to uh, even have any inclination that that would happen. I went down to this competition my first time ever in my life. My, it was, this, this was like my first big barbecue competition outside of these local things that I did back in, uh, in New York State. And to be up there on that stage, you just get your name called, period is a huge achievement. And when some New Yorkers got up on that stage, I think uh, we stunned pretty much the entire barbecue community to say the least. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, was, it was absolutely incredible. And what was really great about it is it validated the fact that we had something. We had something special. We were onto something. And being up there was like, you know what? This is pretty good. We're pretty good at what we do. We could take this to be something else. And that achievement, which was truly the catalyst to, for us to start Pig Beach Barbecue as this pop-up on the banks of the Gowanus Canal in Brooklyn, where nobody ever went before, and create this thing that's become really special. Brisket is the most important meat in Texas. And the most important meat in New York, honestly, is whatever people like. And New York is a very tough city with a lot of very tough critics and a lot of very tough melting pot people from every classic barbecue region there is out there. So we have people coming to us saying, well, I'm from Texas, your brisket better be good. Well, I'm from the Carolinas, your hog or your shoulder better be pretty good. Or I'm from Memphis, or I'm from Alabama. We do our barbecue like this. So as New Yorkers, we do our best to pay homage and give our ode and do our best representation of those regional classics. And what's great about us being from New York is since we're not pigeon held into any specific region of barbecue, we can do just that on our menu at Big Beach. We can curate our favorites. We can do our best representation of those from the inspiration of the legendary pit masters that we've gotten to cook with along the way and do our, our best job at recreating what we think is that perfect bite barbecue. 
Indeed, New York is not known for its barbecue. So the way that we make our restaurant stand out for both our guests and for our competition is what I like to say is having this chef background, being classically trained as a chef and having the opportunities to work with these legendary pitmasters in my small time career in barbecue is really sort of what gives us an opportunity to take sort of an outside approach into it. We do our best to represent those classical region approaches and those flavor profiles, but we get to have fun as New Yorkers and put different flavor profiling spins on things that might be classic uh, renditions of those. So here in New York, we can have a lot of fun with those different flavor profiles. We can do things like pork ribs al pastor, we can do mojo ribs, we can do Lebanese seasoned smoked lamb shoulder with a New York City white sauce and just have a lot of fun and playfulness with this barbecue, but with this little chef driven approach that kind of gives a little nuance or different flavor profilings to things that are those classics while still doing those classical barbecue things to the best of our, our ability to honor and represent our versions of those regions. What is the most popular food dish at our restaurant? And this might actually make me get a little bit of emotional because typically our number one selling item at our restaurant is the Chef Chef brisket sandwich. So when we first started off Pig Beach Barbecue and many of you out there that might be cooking barbecue as a hobby or even as professionals all know your stories of brisket probably being one of the hardest things to cook right in the barbecue world. And my brother-in-law Jeff before he passed was really crucial in helping us get to that point of cooking the perfect brisket. And when we got to there, it was just this, this is an achievement. I'm getting goosebumps now talking about it. It's like, oh my God, we figured it out, we did it. And Jeff was a huge importance in that process of making that happen. So when he, when, when he and I, we all figured this out, he wanted to make a sandwich to put on the menu using brisket. Obviously we're a barbecue restaurant, you gotta have a brisket sandwich of some form. And he created this delicious sandwich with our uh, one-time world champion Memphis and made tomato-based barbecue sauce our house cured pickles, our perfectly cooked salt and pepper brisket, and these crispy onions on top on a potato roll. And it was just this perfect bite of barbecue in a sandwich. And it's our number one selling sandwich that we sell at all of our locations, even our kiosks in uh, City Field too. So it's just really spectacular that that's taken off and we were able to still keep his name alive within having that sandwich on every restaurant menu at, that we have for Pig Beach. <laughs> what is it like being a celebrity guest judge on these major TV shows? I always find this question very, funny because I don't ever consider myself as being a celebrity but what I can say is it's a dream come true when I was a little kid watching the Food Network and watching these legends of food of restaurants of all of it I remember just being I wanted to be like them so now as an adult and I have this opportunity to be on some of these TV shows and to cook with these guys or to have their phone numbers or their cell phone numbers or text back and forth with them or have somebody like Michael Simon call me up and say, Maddie, I'm coming to the restaurant. What are you doing? Get ready. It like pinched me. It's a dream come true. It's absolutely surreal. And I'm just so honored to know that I've been able to achieve this greatness within my career with you know my blood, sweat and tears and my passion for my craft to be able to have these opportunities and these dreams come true.